Hey everybody, it's Andrew Rink for the Remax in Regina. We're out here in Jameson Estates and we are actually going to talk with one of the individuals that's building what's called a net zero home and he's going to explain exactly what a net zero home is. So we've been talking a lot about renewable energies and, and uh, just environmentally friendly items. So this is one big one when it comes to house construction, when it comes to net zero homes. So we've got Adam Putz here, and he is a developer and the builder here on this net zero home. So Adam, what is a net zero home? A net zero home is basically a home that uses zero energy. So that okay. home will produce as much as it uses. Okay, and what are the items that would classify into being a net zero home? So the main items we look at are uh, large amounts of insulation, very airtight building envelope, and then mechanical ventilation is important as well. And then the energy that is used, we're going to use solar panels to offset that energy usage. Cool. Okay. And if someone is wondering, okay, what is the additional cost to bring on to build a net zero home? If they were going to build a, an average home in Regina and then build a net zero home comparable to the size and features that that home has, yep. what would be the cost difference if you can explain that? Uh, we're people? typically seeing about 10% on these builds. Okay, so $300,000 house, you're probably another 30,000, so 330, that's actually not too bad. No, it's not too bad, and that's your upfront investment. However, you're locking in your energy prices, basically, by going right. with your solar panels at that point, right. and it's a long-term investment. Right, and those power bills and everything are not gonna be cheaper as time progresses. Those bills nope. are only gonna go up. <laughs> no, and we have no gas run to this house either, so we won't have a gas utility, and we won't have an electrical utility bill either, essentially, right. if our if our calculations balance. Cool. So we're gonna talk a little bit further on more specifics of what makes a net zero home a net zero home. And one of those components is the windows. So Adam, if you could explain some of the specifications that go with a net zero home and the windows, specifically maybe the installation process, yep. so that people know exactly, well, what are the differences? Yeah, for sure. Uh, these windows, these ones are actually from Europe. Uh, they're a high performance window, so very important. Uh, main thing with them is uh, there's very little thermal bridging in the frame. So the frame itself inside the channels actually has insulation and uses carbon fiber rather than aluminum or metal so it allows less heat transfer or cold transfer. Um, then the other difference is insulation. So on our insulation, these are air taped on the inside and then on the outside as well. And then on the outside we'll also add insulation to come over the windowsill and that'll keep thermal bridging at a minimum as well. And then also, these provide a really nice seal on these kind of units, on the tilt and turns, so that's a bit of a difference versus a, a regular casement or on a window. So we talked about the windows, and now we're gonna talk about the wall assembly, and that's another key component when it comes, when it comes to a net zero house and uh, creating those efficiencies that a net zero home has. So Adam, if you can explain what wall assembly is all about on this particular home. Okay, for sure. There's several different ways you can do a wall assembly and uh, essentially achieve the same result. This is the one we decided to go with. It's a split wall system. So basically this uses your standard two by six wall. We're using 5 8 plywood with a tape seam. So we use a high performance tape and that's essentially our air barrier on this house. So on the inside, we won't have any vapor barrier, which is different than a typical house. This yes. allows us to also have a service cavity. So all our plumbing electrical doesn't need to be air sealed on the inside. And then on the outside, we're getting an extra eight inches of EPS insulation. And then on here, we strap it. So this is uh, allows a surface for our siding to attach to, but at the same time allows air to travel through here and can dry out our siding. And that also allows for our paint to last much longer on a house like this. And with that said, this is a, it's a very safe wall system. It's not going to allow moisture in the wall. So this gives you what kind of R rating for this thickness? We're seeing about, uh, it's about R52. R52? Yeah, <laughs> roughly. Like, it's like an attic. <laughs> yeah, and the attic will be R100, so. <laughs> right. Yeah, so we've talked the wall assembly, we've talked windows, and now we're going to talk about the structure foundation of a net zero home and how it differs in comparison to a regular property that you'd find in Regina. So Adam, if you wouldn't mind explaining the foundation on this property? Yep, for sure. Uh, so with the foundation, you can do a typical foundation. We could have done net zero with a basement. It's not, to get net zero, it's not necessary to avoid the basement. However, on this one, we chose to go with a slab on grade. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, we had the room to build out on this piece of property. So rather than do the basement, we went with this. 
Uh, so this one, it's a slab on grade. The important part though for a net zero house is to have continuous insulation and avoid thermal bridging. So this whole foundation basically has six inches of foam okay. underneath and then up the side. So basically the whole thing's encapsulated with as minimal thermal bridging as possible. Another big component when it comes to a net zero house is the orientation of the house. So the way the house faces, the direction it faces, as well as overhangs and uh, awning systems. So Adam's gonna explain a little bit more about that. So on this house, we want it to be within 15 degrees of south orientation. So basically this whole house on this area faces directly south. So all these glazings are factored in for uh, heat gains in winter. And then the other important thing is for shading during summer. So when the sun's at a higher inclination, they will shelter the windows so it won't cause sunlight to go directly in and heat the space in summer. And then the overhangs as well as the top instead of two feet, which you normally find on a home, yep. is now four feet? Is yeah, right? we've done four feet on the main portions and then some of these smaller ones are three feet. Okay. So I know that was a lot of information Adam threw at you, but uh, if there's more information you want about what net zero homes are all about, uh, you can contact me through my website at andrewrink.com or if you want to talk with Adam directly, you can contact them through their website at pillarandputs.com, which is P-I-L-L-E-R-A-N-D-P-U-T-Z.com. They can provide you more information about what a net zero home is all about. The important thing to note is that when you're building a net zero home, you want to incorporate the builder and the designer and everything to do with energy efficiency on a home right from the start so that you don't have to modify things later which would be almost impossible to get to a net zero rating. So very important to start that piece right at the start. So again you can contact myself or Adam about uh, anything regarding net zero. Thanks again. Take care.